Hi everyone, this is Sultan with Rex Team. Now, I've created several videos in the past to show you how you can generate product feeds. In this particular video, I'll show you how you can add or remove additional attributes to your product feed or how you can even add a custom attribute to your product feed. So let's get started. Now, as you can see, I'm on the dashboard. I already have the plugin installed and activated. When you have the plugin, you'll find this menu called product feed on your dashboard menus, okay? So first, let me click on add new feed, which is gonna take me uh, to a brand new feed creation page. Here, first, let me give a name, just test, all right? And let me just uh, ignore these options as this video is particularly focused on showing you how to add additional attributes to your product feed, all right? So now, for several margins, there are certain uh, specific attributes that you can submit in custom, which means you can add your own attributes to them. And there are certain uh, marketplaces where the default template doesn't require all the attributes, but you do have extra attributes available, all right? So for this particular video, I'm just gonna create a custom feed uh, and show you how to add those attributes, okay? So I can choose the merchant type as custom. Remember, you can add or remove attributes in the same way for any merchant you choose. I'm just using a custom feed for this video only, all right? So I've chosen the merchant type as custom and I'm leaving the file format as XML. And uh, you see by default in custom, we already add a product ID. If you don't need it, you can remove it, but you have to add more attributes to it, right? So let's say for the marketplace, I want to submit this product to, I will need a product name. So first, what you can do is you can click on add new attribute. And once you do that, you'll get the option to choose from all the available attributes that you have by default included in the plugin. Right now, this list will vary depending on the merchant type you have selected. Uh, for Google, you'll find a lot of options. For Marketplatz, you'll see different options. For Facebook, you'll have different options. So it will vary from merchant to merchant what options you get here, what attributes you can choose from in this list, okay? So now, since I want to add the product title, you can see this is product title. I can choose that, all right? And now the type is basically if you want to choose a value from your e-commerce store or do you want to include a static value to this for all the products. Now, obviously, I don't want a static value since each product should have different titles. So I want to choose it from my e-commerce store. For that, you have to choose the type as attribute, okay? Now for the value, again, these are all the values that are available in your e-commerce store. You just have to choose the right value. Now the product title is basically what I want uh, to represent the title tag in my uh, feed. So I'm just gonna choose product title as the value. Now I'm not gonna use any output sanitization and I'm gonna leave the output limit to zero, all right? So I've added a new attribute. Let me just generate this feed and see how this looks. I'll click on publish and you can see the feed is being generated. And once the feed is generated, I have the option to view the feed if it's XML. So I'll just click on view feed and it will open the file in a new tab. And you can see for all my products, uh, this feed includes the product uh, ID and the product title, no other detail, all right? So I've only included these two attributes here. If I want to add more such attributes uh, from this list, then I can just click on add new attribute and I can do that again. Now, what if there is an attribute I want to add, but that is not available in this list? Let's say in a certain marketplace, I need to submit a particular tag called batch size, but I cannot find that in this list, all right? So what I'll do is I'm gonna click on add new custom attribute. What this does is this lets you name your own attribute, okay? So let's say I want to add batch size. So I'll just name it batch underscore size, okay? So let's say that's what I want in the tag. And the type, I can choose attribute if you want a value from my e-commerce store, or I can use static if I want this value to be the same value for all my products. So for this video, I'm just gonna use static in case you need to use a value within your e-commerce store, just choose attribute and choose the value from there. So I'm just gonna choose static and I'm gonna give batch size is 20. Uh, so what this will mean is that all my products will have this tag called batch size. And since I choose a static value, uh, the value will be 20 for all the products, all right? So I'm not gonna use any output sanitization for this, and I'm gonna choose the output limit as zero. Now let me update this feed and see how it looks. So once the feed is generated, uh, let me just view the feed. 
And here you can see for all my products, I have an additional tag called batch size and the value of 20. The value is 20 for all products because I used a static value and the batch size is basically the custom attribute that I added to my feed, all right? Now let me go back to the feed I created and here I can make changes to this whenever I want. Uh, here, let's say I made a mistake with the tag. I can just rename it whenever I want, okay? And as I already told you in previous videos, if you don't need a attribute, you can always remove that using this delete button. And to add a new attribute, you have these two buttons. So that's it. That's how easily you can add additional attributes to your feed or add custom attributes to your feed. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If you face any issues or confusion, you can always reach out to our support team and we will try to assist you. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in one of my future videos. Take care.